The Manhattan Project was one of the most secretive projects in American military history. Although it was called the Manhattan Project, it actually took place in Los Alamos, New Mexico. This was a wide open space, so it was great for the project. There were a ton of extremely intelligent people working to create a few different bombs. This project grew to be something much bigger than they expected. The project eventually employed 130,000 people and cost almost 2 billion US dollars, which today equals about 26 billion dollars. The project was mainly a US project, but was worked on by many other scientists from Britain. Although the US and Britain were in an alliance with Russia, they never really let Russia be a part of the project. They kept it a secret from the Soviets until the first test was successful. The first atomic bomb ever created was called Gadget. It was tested in a very open area out in New Mexico. The bomb was hoisted up to the top of a metal structure and eventually dropped from there. They tried to take into account the fact that it, if it were ever used that it would be dropped from much higher, but there was no safe way to test that at the time. The first testing occurred with no problem. The Americans thought that they had just created a huge advantage over any of their enemies. While this was happening though, there was a very important conference going on. The important conference was the Potsdam Conference. At the conference, the three main men in the alliance, Harry Truman, Winston Churchill, and Joseph Stalin, met to discuss the ending of World War II. Before big discussions started, Harry Truman was informed that the first atomic bomb was detonated and worked as they wanted. Truman went through this conference with a lot of confidence because he knew that they wouldn't need the help of the Soviets to beat the Japanese anymore. Truman acted a bit arrogant throughout. Once there was a break in the discussing, Truman decided he would tell Stalin about their new invention. Truman told him the news as other American officials looked on. As Truman told him, there was no expression on Stalin's face, almost as if there was no surprise to him that they had invented the atomic bomb. All Stalin said to Truman was, it's good to hear of this new invention. The men who were looking on realized the lack of expression immediately. Of course, one of the things that they started to think about was if he had already known. The only way for Stalin to know about the project is if someone on the inside was giving the Soviets information, and this was exactly what was happening. The main person giving the Soviets information was Klaus Fuchs. Fuchs was a very intelligent German theoretical physicist. Although he was German, he was a citizen of Britain. It was said that Fuchs was able to go undetected for so long because he kept his communist beliefs a secret when he moved to Britain. Fuchs became a paid Russian spy as early as 1939, which was well before the Manhattan Project started. Fuchs was so intelligent that he went to Los Alamos in 1944 as part of the British mission. Although he was a spy, he actually made many advances in the making of atomic weapons. People often think of spies as people who lay low and listen in, but Fuchs was the opposite. In fact, he helped so much that it was said if they had limited the passing of information to only the top scientists that he would be in that group. In his years helping the project, Fuchs passed enough information to the Soviets to advance the Russian timetable for a bomb up to a whole year. This was a huge turnaround considering the Americans thought that they would be years ahead of the Soviets in the so-called atomic race. It turned out that Fuchs not only knew about the current projects, but also projects they planned to start in the future. He was called at one point one of the most valuable men in his division and one of the best theoretical physicists they had on the project. The most important information that he had passed to the Soviets was the virtual blueprint for the Trinity device in New Mexico in 1945. A lot of Americans will argue that the main reason why this information was leaked is because of the special relationship between Britain and America. If the U.S. hadn't decided to let Britain in on this project, then Fuchs would have never gotten any of the inside information that he did. In the years after World War II, the secret got out and action was taken against Fuchs. This was a big surprise to a lot of people who had interacted with Fuchs during the project. One lady told the story of when Fuchs moved her car for her and seemed like a regular guy. Little did she know he was actually a Soviet spy. As far as his trial goes, since he wasn't an American citizen, he needed to be tried in the British court system. He was charged with violating the British Official Secrets Act and served nine years and four months in prison. When he was released, he moved to East Germany and continued to pass valuable information to the Soviets about atomic weapons and even played a role in helping develop the first Chinese atomic bomb. Fuchs did some serious damage as far as atomic spies go, but he wasn't the only one. One of the other spies was Theodore Hall. Hall was born in New York City and was the youngest physicist involved in the project in Los Alamos. His main job was to help develop the Fat Man Bomb. 
Hall admitted that he was worried about the U.S. having a monopoly over all atomic weapons, which inevitably led him to giving information about the Fat Man bomb to the Soviets. Along with this information, he informed the Soviets of several processes for purifying plutonium. Hall's situation was much different from Fuchs, who had a communist background. Hall was born in New York City, where there is little possibility of him developing communist beliefs. Hall's motives were purely fear of an atomic monopoly. Although Hall was highly involved in passing valuable information to the Soviets, he was not tried in court until long after the project. In 1955, he was not charged with any crimes. One other atomic spy was David Greenglass. As well as Hall, he was born in New York City. Greenglass became an engineer and was hired to the Los Alamos project in August of 1944. His major offense was giving the Soviets crude schematics of certain lab experiments that took place. The more interesting story involving Greenglass was about his trial though. He himself was obviously charged with a major offense and served nine and a half years in prison, but it's what he did to his sister and brother-in-law that really surprised people. There were reports that there were special codes typed and sent to the Soviets. Greenglass told the judge that the person who typed this information was his sister, Ethel Rosenberg, even though she had no involvement. The person who actually typed this information was his wife, Ruth. Ruth was never charged with any crimes and was waiting for David when he got out of prison. As well as falsely accusing his own sister of passing information to the Soviets, Greenglass turned in his own brother-in-law, Julius Rosenberg, for spying. Because of this information that Greenglass provided to the judge, both Ethel and Julius Rosenberg were executed using the electric chair, even though Ethel was completely innocent. After his release from prison, Greenglass admitted to lying under oath in the court of law, but by that time, no charges could be filed. Alan Nun May isn't as well known for his spy work involving the atomic bomb, but the things that he did had a major effect on national relationships. May, same as Fuchs, is a British citizen and got caught giving the Soviets American intel about the atomic bomb. This led to the end of American and British exchange of information. Because of what Fuchs and May did to this special relationship, Americans no longer shared atomic secrets with Britain. Some people thought the passing of information wasn't a big deal because the Soviets would build their own atomic bomb eventually, but when Russia got the intel, it was a big deal because it led directly into the Cold War.